Here's Razer's current flagship gaming mouse, and that is the Viper V2 Pro. It's coming in at around 145 US dollars or Euro. And the set of features, especially if you look at its predecessor, the Viper Ultimate is indeed impressive. Quick disclaimer, Razer did send me this mouse, but they have no input on what is said in this video, nor was even obligated to make a review video. I don't really like making reviews of stuff that is coming out without me trying it, especially when it's something as important as a gaming mouse. That's your main tool, the most important tool when you're uh, gaming, especially in FPS games, strategy games, well, any game really on the PC. So I've been using this mouse for a few months now, and I've had a lot of experience with the predecessor, the Viper Ultimate. As you can see, this one has been used for quite a while. And uh, visually, it looks almost the same. So why is the V2 Pro something that you should get and this one something that you probably shouldn't get? Start off with some specs. Razer claims this mouse is only 58 grams. Luckily, I have this scale that I use for uh, cooking. Let's see. It says 59, but okay, let's trust them. They say 58, it's 58. You're at 58 grams. That is lighter than the lightest Logitech mouse, I think. Pretty impressive. So if we put the cooking scale back and put the old version of it, that is the Viper Ultimate. That is a pretty significant improvement. When you just hold them in your hands, you definitely feel a pretty giant difference. Although you're thinking it's only like 15 grams or whatever, it does seem to make enough of a difference that this one just feels better. So how did they reduce the weight so much between the two generations? Well, just looking at it, visually you can tell right away. There's no rubber grip on either side of the mouse. There's no LED underneath. This is only paint, this logo right here, or a sticker. And if we turn them to the other side, there's no buttons. They are technically useless if you're right-handed. So unfortunately, the V2 Pro cannot be used by left-handed users. I mean, it can, but then you don't get the side buttons because if you use it with the left hand, like, what are you gonna do? Click it with the pinky? I don't know. You might say that's a problem for the mouse. I would say that's a net positive overall. Turn it upside down. Again, there's much less going on on the whole mouse. Razer seem to try really hard to focus on performance over all kinds of bling. Because maybe the pros were not too satisfied with the Viper Ultimate because they didn't cut enough corners to get the performance out of the mouse. Even though this mouse is really good for gaming, don't get me wrong. They've completely removed the charging dock implementation, as well as the USB dongle storage, which was kind of handy, I must say, but it definitely added to the weight overall, I think, because of the design. They've changed the mouse gates too, I'm not sure which ones I prefer, but if I had to vote, I would say the Viper V2 Ultimate. The sensor max DPI increased to 30K, um, but who cares about that? Like, you're not really going that far anyway. I think they, they can't sell that trick anymore to anyone. The charging port changed as well. On the left, on the Ultimate, you have the micro USB, and on the right, you have USB-C. Even though this video is a review of this mouse, I have to compare it to the Viper Ultimate because it took everything that the Viper Ultimate was good at and then improved upon it. Some things that were bad on the Ultimate are gone here. And I'm pretty impressed by how much effort Razer put in to correct all the mistakes from the Ultimate and just do it better here. So let's start with what was wrong with the Viper Ultimate. I think the first thing you would notice on the left click is that it's a little bit mushy and slow. Also, on the way back, 
when it's bouncing, you can almost hear how the plastic rattles a little bit. It doesn't really feel snappy, which is what you would expect from a high-end gaming mouse. Now, I think that this feature is kind of good for some people that want peace and quiet because this is a pretty quiet mouse compared to the new one. Let's just compare the loudness and the sound in general. So if you want a quiet mouse, this one is really good for that. But the feel, the feel is so much better on this one. Even though both mice are using optical switches, I don't think these are even remotely close. This is a completely new thing. As you can see, the clicks are very responsive and they just feel faster. And there's no rattling of the plastic. So another thing that was wrong with the ultimate was the scroll. It's just a little bit too loud. It doesn't feel that great. But on the V2 Pro, it's almost silent. Probably one of the biggest problems for me on the ultimate you cannot choose whether you, this is going to be rubberized or not. It automatically is from the factory. And I've tried cleaning this, but the problem is that it just gets worn out. Look at this. Like this is a little hole here, a little crevice. And when you hold it, you can definitely feel it. I've come to notice that I don't really even need rubber on the sides. Like, the grip is pretty nice without it, especially since this mouse is quite a bit lighter than the Ultimate. And now the biggest subjective issue for me, and I've noticed this over months and months of usage, are these two buttons. First of all, they follow the same pattern as the main buttons. They're too mushy, too slow, too unresponsive. Just They just don't feel great when you click them. It's like they add a hundred milliseconds to every click. That's how it feels. And the trigger is so deep inside. Like you have to click almost all the way to activate it. And on that note, this is my second Viper Ultimate. The first one's buttons got double click both of them within a few months. And it's something that Razer has been struggling with for years. Just QA issues or materials or just in general the products not lasting all that long and there's a small design change that you don't notice at first but if you look at the buttons on the left on the ultimate the buttons are a little bit more tucked in and the side buttons here on the v2 pro are a little bit more further out not only that but the v2 pro the buttons are so much more responsive. And as soon as you touch them, you click. But there's enough force so you don't accidentally click. And these side buttons are something that I really like about the new V2 Pro. No plus 100 milliseconds. So if we go back to the weight, 50 something grams, 58 in this case, just feels amazing. I didn't think it would make this much of a difference, but it really does. It's so snappy. And of course, the extra freedom of a wireless mouse, which is the best choice for gaming now. Please don't, don't even try to say that wired mice are the way to go. There's just not that much room for improvement anymore uh, once you get to the 50-ish grams. Also, this shape and size feels like one of the most universal ones that's going to fit most people possible and i definitely recommend you check it out try it at a store before you buy it you're most likely going to like it the small indicator here 
is only to tell you of different statuses. For example, right now it's saying that it's not connected to a PC. Uh, it would glow green, I think, occasionally if it was connected. But that's about it. There's really no bling. 100% performance on this mouse, which is something that I've really wanted to see from Razer because, you know, they're, they're one of the OG companies. They've kind of revolutionized the gaming world with so many of their different peripherals. And I think this mouse brings them straight to the top when it comes to eSport performance. And that's great to see. But why does the title say almost perfect? You see, I told you that this ultimate is my second one because the first one broke down, the buttons broke down on the side. Well, unfortunately, this is also my second Viper V2 Pro. That's why it looks so new, even though I've been using it for a few months. So what broke on this one? Well, so the scroll wheel would do random ups and downs, opposite of the direction you want it, it to do. So it just made gameplay impossible. If you had anything bound to this, I don't know. I don't use that, but switch weapon, you go one down, sometimes it will go up down. You would end up on the same weapon, stuff like that. So uh, they've sent a new one in. Unfortunately, it seems to be a trend with Razer still. The QA seems to be their, their pain point, but the features, the innovation, clean design, performance, I don't think anything else really beats this mouse. This might just be the ultimate mouse. I just want it to last for a few years. I don't want more than like three or four years. Is that a lot to ask from a gaming mouse these days? I don't know. And you know, sometimes when I feel down about the current state of the gaming industry in general, I just bring out my old trusty FK2 with its cable. Yeah, I know, whatever. Let's just put that away. Let's act like it's wireless. And uh, just admire how good of a value this was back in the day. Like this mouse lasted me for four or five years. You clean it, it looks like new. Oh damn, that feels so good. And what's funny, this mouse is probably going to outlast this one. So are we really asking too much from these? I think the problem is that we're so heavily trending towards lighter mice that the materials used in them are getting worse and worse for just long-term usage and the construction has to be less sturdy. So they're more prone to disasters like uh, the side buttons failing, the scroll wheel failing, etc. But at the same time, they are claiming that their optical switches are completely immune to double click issues. And I think they've even put something similar on these two now because they weren't optical before, but they have a very similar feel to these now. The battery life, I think, improved a little bit. I'm not sure if the battery changed or not, but you definitely don't have the bling, the LEDs, so that's a step forward. So is this mouse worth getting? At 145, I would say yes, but it is one of the most expensive ones that you can get. Now, there are a lot of good mice on the market right now, does this one stand out? I think it does. It's got everything. It's pure performance and convenience. Zero bling. Literally zero bling. You can customize it a little bit too. And it does seem like they fixed all of the issues that their previous mouse had, even though it was one of the most highly recommended wireless mice at the time. So at the time of recording, on the US Amazon, it was going for 120. I think it's worth it. If this mouse lasts you for a few years, you're getting a really good deal then. Guys, let me know in the comments what you think of this mouse or maybe 
if you have the Viper Ultimate and you wish to upgrade as well, I think it might be worth upgrading, especially if this one is bothering you in some way. Also, let me know if there's some better alternatives to this mouse and if I should check them out and maybe do a review. I'll see you in the next one.